So we are looking at uh, taking calculated risks skill bite. Um, you'll notice that I've pre-drawn a number of different things and I know our policy in the Pearl Skill Bites is not to pre-draw too much, um, but I think in order for us to do this justice, it requires a certain amount of preparation. There's principally three things I've pre-drawn. One is the impact probability matrix, which is in your handout and it's also a hidden slide in your PowerPoint. The other is a risk response, so we look at what to do in the face of different risks, so how we do some mitigation. And then I've also written down our crucial um, six steps to uh, risk assessment, the questions we use for risk assessment. So they would be on three different flip charts. Um, I may have written up what is a risk and I may have written up the risk identification statements. Just see how you go as you work through the lesson plan. So as always, what we start with is our aims and objectives. Take the group through the aims and objectives just like you would ordinarily do. Basically, as a principle, what we're trying to do is get the participants to feel more confident uh, or braver, bolder taking risks. We want to encourage them to look out, evaluate and then to take risks so they're moving more dynamically. That's, that's principally what we're trying to achieve. Once they've done that, you dive into your question for exploration. I would suggest small groups of four because this is quite an intense conversation. And there we have our four statements, five statements. Why would a company such as Merck want to encourage you to take more risks? What do you think stops you or others taking risks? Think of a time you took a risk in life and it worked. Think of a risk taken at work by you or someone else. Typo there, I'll change that. How did it work out? How would you describe your appetite for risk? So there's a lot on there. We want them to have a general discussion around risk. You may find they don't get through all the questions. I think that's totally acceptable. Let's just get dive into the topic of risk. Uh, there's a lot of um, sensitivity around it in the business. So we do that and we do our plenary. Again, I would hope about 15 minutes, but that's a lot to cover in a very short space of time. Small groups, more conversation. We know about the skill bites that what the people love is having small group conversations and getting stuck into the content. So once they've been through the questions, I want you to dive straight into a case study. And I'm going to use the, the Thai cave rescue where the young football team were trapped underground. So we bring up this case study statement. There are 12 teenage boys and a 25 year old teacher trapped in a cave system. They're 2,950 metres inside the cave, half of which is full of water. The boys have been without food, light and communication for nine days. It is approaching monsoon season and the water in the cave is rising. The boys cannot swim. So very, very basic information, but principally that was the data that was uncovered with nine days into the, into the rescue or into the discovery of the boys. What you're going to do in the class Show them a picture, by the way, talk them through it. So this is where the group were found. This was the cave entrance. This is the thickness of the mountain. Some points too narrow to wear scuba tanks. So we've got a basic amount of information for them. And then we pose this statement. Again, they're working in small groups. The rescue committee have identified three options. Train the boys to dive through the flooded areas of the cave. Continue to pump water from the cave and wait for the levels to naturally recede. Find or drill an alternative passage into the cave. Choose one of these options. How would you go about assessing the risks? So I'm quite keen for them just to get stuck into looking at options and doing a risk assessment and seeing what they know. There isn't a right answer to this. We're looking for them to engage with the content and just practice, uh, you know, looking at and assessing risk. The actual decision was to train the boys to dive through the cave system, which most people will probably know about, but it'll be interesting to see if they dive into one of the other questions, one of the other possible scenarios. Um, plenary discussion, as always. I think I'm going to put some information, and there's some stuff online, but I'm going to put some information in the Dropbox folder that talks about, the case, about this incident and about how it played out and some of the, some of the, some of the things that happened. Um, so great conversation, we, rather than go through a model too early, we, I wanted to get them into a conversation about risk. Uh, once you've done that, you're left with quite a lot of complexity, so the group won't necessarily have a clear system, they won't know what the right decision is, they won't know how to assess risk. So you, you then want to wind them back and say, now we're going to teach the model. We're going to look at six basic steps to identifying, assessing, mitigating, and acting upon a risk, a decent risk assessment. 
And our six questions are down here at the bottom, I suspect. Let me just angle that down. There we go. What we've got is, um, and this is where you introduce the group to these. You'll have them on a flip chart. You can peel the flip chart over. These are the six basic processes to risk identification, assessment and mitigation. What are we trying to achieve? What could affect us achieving it? Which of these things is most important? What should we do about it? There are four big hitting questions. Then we do it and then we assess whether it works or not. This should map across into any project manager's normal risk assessment process, which is objective setting. This is about the objective. So set the outcome. What could affect us achieving it? This is risk identification. Risk ident. Which of these things is most important? Risk assessment, risk assess, what should we do about it? This is risk mitigation, okay, do it, we implement the process, monitor and review, did it work? But it's these four that we're particularly interested in at this point in the, in the workshop, in the skill bite, okay? So talk them through that. Then you need to break it down into its individual parts to give people an opportunity to say, well, what does it mean to identify an objective? What does it mean to identify the risk? So question number one, what is a risk? It's any uncertainty which could affect our desired outcome. The key word in that is identifying clear outcomes. Unless we identify clear outcomes, then the whole thing becomes meaningless. We could do a risk assessment of going outside, but what's the outcome we're trying to achieve by going outside? Um, if you're thinking of staying in the business or leaving and setting up your own business, you need to identify an outcome. You can't do a risk assessment on whether you should stay in your job or, or leave and set up your own business unless you've established an outcome. If that were me, if I was in an organisation, when I was in an organisation and I was looking at going self-employed, my outcome was being able to earn enough money and lead a fulfilling life and have, a, have some freedom. So I had to identify those outcomes in order to evaluate whether to stay in the job I was in or whether to leave and go self-employed. So identifying outcomes is often underestimated but is a really significant part of this process. So any uncertainty which affects our desired outcomes, and that fits in here. What are we trying to achieve? In the cave rescue scenario, what are we trying to achieve? The safe rescue of those boys and their coach. That's what we're trying to achieve, nothing else. So we're not trying to break new ground, we're not trying to develop new technology, even though Elon Musk sent over a, a robot submarine that he designed, it wasn't about that, it was about the safe rescue of the boys. And therefore the risk assessment is very much grounded in clarity of outcome. So step number one, identify the outcome. Step number two, risk identification. So here's a little challenge for the group. What you're going to do is get them into small groups and you're going to say, looking at these statements, which are causes, which are risks and which are effects. So we're looking for them to try and identify a cause. So look at this statement, as a result of cause, certain risk, unexpected uncertainty may occur, which would lead to effect. Okay, so we want them to be able to look at those statements and start to identify them. Leave them in small groups, having a discussion, let it play out just for five or six minutes, and then you say, okay, everybody, let's have a look at where you got to. And then we'll bring up the next slide, which shows our blue, reds, and green. So the mountain is too high, stroke thick, to be able to drill through. That's a cause. The boys could panic whilst underwater. Well, that's a risk. It's not an outcome, it's not an effect, it's, it's an event. The cause could be uh, we take them swimming with insufficient training. The risk is they panic whilst underwater. The effect is they drown as they're, as they're trying to carry out their rescue. The group could be underground until after the monsoon season, three months. So one of the options we gave them right at the beginning was we continue to pump the water and let it recede by natural, in natural means. Well that, the group could be underground until after the monsoon, is one of the causes that could occur. And so you talk through these, asking them, do you think this is a cause? 
Do you think this is a risk or do you think this is an effect? And that allows us to set up effect good solid risk statements. As a result of cause, such and such a risk may occur, which would lead to this effect. It may not be possible to get food and water to the group. That is a risk. The effect of that is they starve or they die of thirst. The group could die through lack of food and water. That's an effect. The route cannot be completed on a single tank of oxygen. That's not a risk, that is a potential uncertainty. So there we go, that's first of all, that is about, that's um, first of all, we're identifying the objective or the outcome we're trying to achieve. Second of all, we're trying to identify what could affect us achieving it, okay? So that's the piece of work you do around that. And then what we're gonna get them into is back into the case study and we're going to ask them to take questions one to four and apply it to the cave rescue scenario. Now before you dive into that, what you might want to do is how do we evaluate uncertainty? So how do we evaluate the risk? So we've identified the causes and the risks and the effect. We then need to look at them because we're into risk assessment, step number three, and we measure that in terms of its impact and its probability. Something that has a very low impact and a very low probability is going to fit down here in this quadrant. Something that's got a very high impact and a very high probability is going to go in this red section here. And these are the things, obviously, that we're particularly concerned about. And then you've got green stuff down here and amber stuff in the middle. But this is all about your risk assessment process. So we're looking at what is the what is the likelihood of these things happening? So in this activity, having taught them all of that content, set them to work, they have to state an objective, they have to identify and phrase the risks, and then apply an assessment score, probability versus impact, and suggest a response strategy. So how would they mitigate it? If, for example, they identify that the group may have to stay underground for three months, how are they going to mitigate that particular cause that would cause a risk. Set them to work, let them play with those, that's all about objective setting, identification and then mitigation. And then we run a plenary. When you do the plenary, what you may find is that we have to then start bringing in risk responses. This is the mitigation process. So here are our four possible options when it comes to mitigating risk. We can either eliminate it allocate it or, or put it somewhere else, give it to somebody, other, uh, somebody else's responsibility. We can modify the risk or we can include it in our planning and, it, and just accept it. So if it's something negative, we either avoid it, transfer it, reduce it or accept it. There principally are four different things. On the right hand side, we've got the positive stuff around risk, where it's, if it's a good thing that could happen, let's say the risk is we're gonna make money, we exploit, share, enhance or accept. We're most interested, I suspect, in this left-hand side of the model. So eliminate, allocate, modify, include. So when they start to look at their response strategies, introduce this thing, which you pre-drawn, and say, is that, are you going to eliminate the risk? Are you going to give them food so that they're kept fed for three months? Are you going to allocate that risk to somebody else? Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to give it to this department. Are you going to modify it? So, well, we could give them some food. Or are you going to include it and just say, well, that's just acceptable. We're just going to have to accept that that, that may happen as we go through this, this particular rescue. So that allows you to then back up some of the stuff that might come up in the plenary conversation. My experience, having run this three times, um, is that people get into this. We have project managers in the room who have risk assessment processes. We have a number of people saying, well, what is a calculated risk? Can you give us a definition of a calculated risk? How do I eliminate risk? How do I make decisions and make sure I'm not going to get in trouble? And none of these questions we can actually answer. OK, so you're going to have to be kind of um, you have to be comfortable in the ambiguity of some of the some of the observations the group make in this respect. We want to explore risk in all its complexity and say to people, at the end of the day, what we have to get into the habit of doing is running with an idea, having conviction, convincing as many stakeholders as you, as you can early enough on. Um, it will come up that people talk about aligning with stakeholders when they talk about the business. 
because we have to head into, from this case study scenario, you might find you get into people having conversations about drug trials or people having conversations about projects that they're working on and, and mitigating and assessing the risk on those projects. So a, a certain amount of comfort and ambiguity is quite important when you're, when you're delivering this skill bite. Um, Having spoken around it, you're going to do the commitment session at the end. Make some commitments, what are you going to do differently, and then you exchange the cards. There is also an optional activity, which is in your lesson plan, which I quite like, and I have done it on two of the three occasions in which I delivered this, and that is looking at people's relationship to risk. So you have taped out on the floor a great big um, uh, cross, a great big cross, and you're, you've drawn, let me get a different colour, you can draw on the flip chart, if I do the cross like so, let me just check this, risk seeking my organisation, so we've got risk seeking and also risk seeking here and then risk averse and risk averse okay so we have our cross risk averse risk seeking risk averse risk seeking and then we have this is my organization and then this is me and if we are in an organization that is risk seeking but we are risk averse then we find ourselves down here in that quadrant there how does that feel? It may be that we are risk seeking, but my organ, I think that's what I've done. Yes, sorry, that's me being risk seeking and my organization being risk averse. How does that feel? It may be that we are risk averse, but my, uh, but my organization is risk seeking. How does that make me feel? Okay, so we can have conversations about being in those different places. Once they've looked at it and understood it, then you can get them to stand on the great big cross in the middle of the classroom. M m m uh, you know, mirrored to this cross on here, you want them to stand on the cross. And that will then evoke some conversations. So what does it feel like if you are risk averse, but you're in an organization that's encouraging you to take risks? Some people say that's quite uncomfortable, that's quite scary. What does it feel like if your organisation, your team is risk averse, but you are risk seeking. It feels constraining. It feels like it's holding me back, like it's containing me in some way. So it can be really helpful to get people to, to play with their relationship to risk and their team or their bosses or their organisation's relationship to risk. And it's quite a nice way to finish this whole thing around risk assessment because different people will be good at different parts of this process. And there's one little bit that we haven't talked about, which is, it kind of goes in just here, which is check in with your intuition, your gut feeling. When you've identified your objective, how convinced are you that it's a good idea to take the risk? How much, if you were to have to choose now between the left door and the right door, which door would you go through? Would you go through this or would you go through that one? Without doing any assessment, without doing any checking, it's worth just asking yourself, do you know what, my gut says we need to go for this and I haven't got the argument why at the moment, but I just think we should go for it. Then we go through the risk assessment process and at the end, we check back in with our gut feeling and not forgetting that our intuition, our experience, um, our are uh, that, that, that the stuff that's really hard to describe, that subconscious sense of what is right and what is wrong can help inform the decision. But we still do, and that might be dictated by some of this stuff around am I risk averse or am I risk seeking? So in this workshop, we've covered all sorts of things. We've covered a process, we've covered risk identification, we've covered risk mitigation and response, and we've looked at our intuition or our gut feel. There's a lot to fit in in this workshop and there's no hard and fast answers. There's two bits that might be missing, not missing, but there's two bits that I haven't spoken about yet. And number one is I'm putting together some videos by the leaders of different parts of the Merck business to share their perspective on risk. And I want us to open with that if possible. It mentions it in the lesson plan, but at the moment it's not in the presentation because we haven't got that from Merck. And then the last thing is another video which comes next, 
fact I need to clean that off there and it's a funky little video about risk taking which is a really nice way to finish sorry about the light it's really bright and it washes out washes out the whole thing if I just tap that it might be a bit darker and then we come on to our final video now you won't be able to see that but you'll notice it in the presentation. It's a nice way to finish, and then you've obviously got to let everybody go their, go their separate ways. And that, my friends, is the How to Take Calculated Risks uh, workshop. Good luck.